All right, exercise seven. So we're asked to construct a TXY and XY McCabe Thiele diagram for the binary system heptane and decane at a pressure of one bar. You can assume Reynolds law is appropriate. And on each of the diagrams, uh, plot the reference data on page 377 from the uh, class text and comment on how your results compare to the reference data. Um, we're told that the vapor pressure of heptane and decane can be described by Antoine's equation uh, with the parameters provided uh, below. All right, so how would you go about doing this? Okay. As always, the first thing I might do is start with drawing a TXY phase diagram, since that's what I'm asked to calculate. Okay, so pure component limit, this would be T1 sat, which is less than T2 sat. Right, and maybe my TXY looks something like this. Oh, <laughs> something like this, okay? Where um, we have heptane and decane, uh, so a mixture of C7 and C10, Definitely seems like that's something Rails Law should be applicable for. A mixture of two linear alkanes, where C7 would be more volatile than uh, C10. All right, and so what do we know? Well, we know our pressure is one bar. Okay, so we know P, um, but that's it. Okay, now if I think about some of the calculations we've done before and some of the earlier problems, some of the Rails Law problems, if I have a um, well, you know, let's just think. If I'm, you know, what I want to map out is um, here's my bubble line up here, and here's my dew line down here. So if I have a system at two phase coexistence, okay, you know, what do I need to know? Well, if I have a system that two phase coexistence, all right, my chemical equilibrium criteria is just Y1P is X1, P1 set, all right, Reynolds Law, my isofugacity equation. Okay, so if I look at this, right, I know P, okay, so P is known, okay, and so right now I have essentially three equations with three unknowns, okay, I say, um, you know, I, I consider Y1 and Y2 and X1 and X2 to be one and the same, because uh, again, we know Y1 is just 1 minus Y2, uh, and X2 <clears throat> is 1 minus, ah, X1 is 1 minus X2, okay, so you know, yeah, we could think of it as I have one, two, three, four, um, five. Now, how would I do this? One, two, three, four. Uh, so, four unknown compositions. Um, and you could think of this as, you know, essentially P1 set and, and P2 set are unknown. Okay. But I'm going to erase this and just think of Y1 and Y2 and X1 and X2, that relationship being known and fixed. Okay. So if I look at these two equations, okay, um, so initially you could think that I have, you know, four unknowns, Y1, X1, and P1 set and P2 set, okay? But remember, P1 set and P2 set are just functions of T, right? I know my Antoine constants, so P1 set and P2 set are just functions of T. So essentially the only unknowns are Y1, X1, and T. So I have two equations with three unknowns, right? So I can't, you know, solve for Y1, X1, and T, so I need to fix another um, variable. And so, you know, with that, how I typically think about, you know, doing these calculations then is I know my x's are going to go from 0 to 1, right? Just as is I could think of my y's are going to go from 0 to 1, okay? And so basically we're just going to, you know, loop over x1 values over the range from um, 0 to 1. So basically you loop over x1 values from 0 to 1, okay? And so for each case, for each instance when x is fixed at a given value, x is then known, and our only unknowns then become y1 and t. So I have two equations with two unknowns that I can solve, okay? Cool. All right, so, um, you know, if I want to think of this and say uh, Excel, uh, what would I do? Well, uh, you know, I can set up a sheet where I know x1 values, 
I fill that in from 0 to 1. Okay, um, I don't know y1. Okay, uh, we'll say I don't know t. Okay, but then in the next row I would calculate, say, p1 sat and p2 sat. then it could either be a cell or you could just make a row where the value of p is fixed where here p is you know one bar all right so all right or maybe we're just some uh, constant defined in the cell yeah so the basic idea would be okay i start with well row one's not all that interesting you know because this is just t2 sat i could directly solve my uh, antoine equation and y10 other peer component limits not interesting as well, uh, but you know, nonetheless. Okay, so in between, so say this where x1 is 0 0.01, uh, then I can just go up to my two equations with two unknowns and solve for y and t, right? And once I have t, you know, then you can calculate p1 sat and p2 sat, you know, if you like. Okay, sure. Okay, so easier said than done. So uh, if you're doing this, say, in MATLAB and you had a for loop to loop over x1 values, two equations with two unknowns, I could tackle that using uh, f0. If, you know, uh, or if I wanted to solve it sequentially, uh, I could first solve for t and then solve for y. How I would do that is using a bubble p calculation, all right? Because if I have a bubble p calculation, then the trick is, okay, so again, we're going to specify um, x and solve for y. Okay, so I add these two equations together, and I get p. All right, so let's just write as p. p is equal to x1 p1 sat plus x2 p2 sat. Okay, for here, right? I know this. This is one bar. Okay. Um, I know x1 and then x2, right, because that's what I specified in that iteration. And so then what I have is a single equation with a single unknown t, right? I just iterate on t until this equation is satisfied, all right? If I'm using, say, f0 uh, MATLAB, then this is, you know, readily solved using f0 by setting this animal up as an error function, all right? All right, and so, you know, what might be preferred rather than using f solve to solve the two equations uh, uh, simultaneously is I could first do bubble p calculation and I could just solve for my single unknown t and I could use, say, f0 to solve for that. And then once I have p, well, then I just go back over my Rails law expression, right, y1 p is x1 p1 sat, okay? And once I solve for, um, or once I solve for t, right, not once I have p, once I solve for t, and hence I know p1 sat and p2 sat, all right, y1 would just be x1 p1 sat over p, okay? So I could first solve for p, or I could first solve for t via my bubble p calculation. And then once I have t, right, by solve, finding the t so that this equation uh, is satisfied, so finding the t, so which I get the right vapor pressure, so that this equation is satisfied. Then once I have t, then I can just directly solve for y. All right? You would just loop over your x1 values um, and repeat. All right? And so that's where, uh, ideally, I would think you would set this up, say, in MATLAB or some other computer program, so you could just loop over x1 values. Uh, you could do it in Excel, uh, but I would guess that that would be pretty annoying in that for each x value, You'd have to use a goal seeker solver to do your your bubble p calculation um, to solve for t, and then once you had t, then you could calculate y1. All right, so it'd be a lot more manual in that um, you know for each row you'd have to use goal seeker solver to solve for t. All right, but it could be done. Uh, and then once you have um, all your data for your txy, the kteli is just um, y versus x. Right, so you just plot this column versus that one. Then txy is this column. Uh, versus that versus my first column and this column versus my y column okay cool uh, easier said than done but you know that's all there really is to setting it up it's just repetitively doing a Rails law calculation uh, where for each case you're looking at a different x value from 0 to 1